Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, God's Generals. And this day's lectionary readings display three major characters in Scripture, King David, Moses, and Paul, and the ministry difficulties they faced. Each passage focuses on their struggle with adversaries and showcases the model for effective, Christ-honoring servant leadership. We can learn from each of them. First is King David. He had his life threatened constantly. It seemed that often the threats were going to be successful. After all, King David's first public act was as a young boy standing up to Goliath. Ever the underdog, God prospered the young man from Jesse's household. David suffered bouts of self-doubt and fearing the worst. I mean, who could be confident when chased by an army? But faith returned again and again. Let's listen to an older David's heart. Psalm 42. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. And then secondly, Moses. Moses led Israel out of Egyptian bondage, and he had more than his share of adversaries who wanted to turn back. Holding court to settle disputes for peanut-sized issues took all day. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, saw how Moses was being worn out with settling minor disputes and problems and advised him to find godly leaders to help shoulder the load. Moses took Jethro's advice and diligently built a structure to honor God's ways and keep God's people focused on the mission. Exodus chapter 18 Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice and followed his suggestions. He chose capable men from all over Israel and appointed them as leaders over the people. And then thirdly is Paul. Paul is the poster child for leaders with critics who are trying to undermine and side rail his ministry. The most glaring example were those who preached the gospel out of envy for Paul's success. They thought that building their own following would put Paul to shame. For them, it was a competition. They wanted him to rot in prison. Paul's letter to the Philippian believers was his response, the selfless, Christ-focused answer of the ages. Philippians chapter 1. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ, as I've been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. For you today, the models of Moses, David, and Paul take personal hardships and transform them into mirrors which reflect God's power and goodness. All who lead in God's family should make it a life goal to do the same. Like David, learn to put fears and worries in the rearview mirror. Like Moses, listen to sound advice from elders who love God. And like Paul, trust and lean on God's decision about the future and continue serving until he calls you home. It's safe ground to follow the leadership style of God's choice vessels. If you're going to lead in God's army, study his best generals. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.